Good afternoon, everybody. Well, it's afternoon here. It may be morning, it may be afternoon, it may be evening, depending on where you're at around the world. But we appreciate you joining us. Uh, it's Heath Robinson with Topaz Labs, and I'm excited again to be back with Rad Drew to present creating painterly and vintage images in Topaz Studio using Topaz adjustments and effects. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So um, many of you know that I, I do a lot of iPhone photography. So I'm in the habit of taking a real image and making it unreal in some way or another. And so um, I've really enjoyed Topaz um, Studio and the effects and adjustments for that because it lets me do paintings and textures and just so many different things. And what I like about it is the control that I have to do pretty much precisely what I envision, what I want. So, um, and not, not to suggest that I always know where I'm headed because sometimes it's about experimenting and um, finding something um, kind of serendipitously. So um, I'm gonna show you my workflow. That's part of it is standard workflow and then parts of it are gonna branch off into other things that are maybe a little different than what we've talked about before. Um, by now, I think most of us are familiar with what is about a year old um, Topaz Studio interface that we're looking at here. Over on the left are all of the effects um, tools that we have that um, are created by, by putting together different adjustment um, uh, adjustments into these different packages. So um, the basic Topaz Studio, which consists of, if we look over here at the adjustment, we have, I think these 11 adjustments above this line right here are all free with Topaz Studio download. And then also the crop, heel, lens, um, uh, what do you call that? Lens. Um, Correction. Thank you. Lens correction, masking, and a few other things are all part of the basic free Topaz Studio. So even if you don't choose at this point to invest in the effects or the adjustments, you can still get a lot of value out of this out of the free um, photo editor. It's it's pretty cool. Um, so again, over here on the left, we have the effects. Over on the right, we have the adjustments. The adjustments panel, if I open this up, these are the different dif adjustments that, um, that are purchasable as part of the um, adjustment packages uh, offered by Topaz. Um, and then there's still some, um, some tools that are still plugins. So one we'll use today is called InFocus. And InFocus is still not integrated yet into Topaz Studio. But slowly, um, Heath and his team have been adding these plugins into this interface to make it, um, it runs faster, it's just much more convenient. And um, so you can probably look for some of these that aren't here now to be there soon. So um, with that said, the other things we have here, are some standard things that you'll see in, in this and other apps, you've got the ability to look at a preview in the original, you can zoom in and out, you can zoom to 100% and then you can click to fit to the screen. If you take your finger on the screen and roll with your mouse, you can size the image that way. Um, you can also look at up here in the upper right, you can display before and after uh, in different horizontal or vertical um, ways to see the image. Um, you can also click on these little arrows to hide panels to give you more real estate to work with if, if that's what you um, need to do. Um, that's, that's enough of that for now. We can, we'll kind of encounter some of these other things um, as we um, work through some images. So I've got several images that I'm going to show you today um, and how I processed them. Um, so this image of three trees I took recently here in Indiana out looking for mushrooms. I didn't find any mushrooms, but I found these three trees. I thought they were really cool on the horizon. And so uh, this is a Fuji shot. And by the way, I'm working with JPEG images right now just because they run faster. But you typically I would drag my raw files into the Topaz editor and work with those. And that's what I would encourage you to do um, when you're processing. So um, the first thing that, I, that I've that i actually already done with this image, um, and I do this with any landscape, I leveled my horizon. It was slightly off. Um, and I went in and used the crop tool right here um, to level the horizon. Um, normally, I would also go around the image and see are there any spots or blemishes or things, you know, a sign, anything I need to remove. And if so, I would use the healing brush right here to do that. This image is pretty clean, so I don't have to worry about that. So where I'm going to start is with 
um, a basic adjustment, and this is where I start most of my um, my images when I'm adjusting, whether for RAW or in this case JPEG. The first thing I want to do is set a black and a white point in the image. So I make sure that I'm looking at the histogram up here at the top, and you do that by clicking on the, the RGB button um, at the top. You also got another type of histogram, and then you have a, a navigation tool over here that lets you move around the image when you're enlarged. But for right now, I want to look at RGB histogram. And I'm going to come down and look down here where we've got black level and white level. And I'm going to take the black level and I'm going to slide it to the left. And I'm watching the histogram and I'm going to take it to the left until I hit the left side of the frame here um, with the histogram. If I go beyond that, let it climb up the wall, I start to lose detail in my blacks and begin to crush those. On the other side, I want to bring my white level up to I want to slide this over to where I'm up against the frame on the other side. Now, again, if I go too far there, you can see what's happening. I've lost all the detail in my highlights in the image. So the idea is to kind of find it, uh, that right in between there. So you have a really balanced exposure throughout. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do here is um, I'm just going to, I'm looking at this exposure and I'm really pleased with it, but I could make some adjustments. If I wanted to, I could either, brighten it up a little bit, or I could, if I wanted to, bring those um, that exposure down a little bit and, and make it a little darker. But I think in this case, I'm gonna bring it up just a tiny bit, and I'm watching my histogram, and I'm watching the image, and I don't see that I'm blowing anything out. I'm getting close right here, but it's not yet. Then I'm gonna go and take um, my clarity up just a little bit, and kind of look at that. And that's probably just fine. And I think I'm okay. I might have to bring my white level down a little bit because I'm climbing that wall over there a little. So, yeah, I think about right there. So, by the way, one other little tip that, that you can do, you notice how these sliders, you move back and forth and you have the, the numerical values over here. Sometimes it's really hard. You know, you just need to go one value at one point but it's hard to slide to get just one. If you put your cursor in this little numeral box and then use your arrow keys, like the up and down arrow keys, you can, you can go up. So you, you see how I'm adjusting with one tap at a time, I'm adjusting that white level up. And it's really handy when you're trying to do a really fine um, adjustment, you can, you can use the arrow keys to do that. Okay, so that looks, Pretty good. It looks like I may have bumped my, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Um, and uh, let's see, look at my, so the next thing I'm gonna do on this one, I'm gonna use a tool in here called Dehaze. And I'll go down to Dehaze. And one of the things I wanted to point out on this, um, you can make custom adjustments to this adjustment here by sliding the sliders, but you also have several presets. And for, um, for this particular adjustment and also reduce noise, I really like to start out by looking at what these presets do for the image. And you notice it's got three different ones set. These two are ones that I created myself for different images. Um, and actually that Topaz test doesn't look too bad, does it? I didn't try that one before, but usually I end up coming up here to, to dehaze, light dehaze, and heavy dehaze, and I look at how it affects the image. Um, and in this case, I think on this one, I'm going to go ahead with the um, with the heavy dehaze. And some of this is is simply a, a judgment on what I'm seeing in the image. So it's about about what you feel creatively that you want to do with with the image. Um, the next adjustment that I'm going to do is reduce noise. And I like to zoom in really well because the noisiest part of this image is going to be the sky. And this really isn't bad. This is not much noise at all. But I am going to go back again to my um, presets within the noise adjustment and open those up. And again, you've got heavy noise, light noise, medium noise. And as you mouse over each of these, you can see the effect. It takes a minute for it to kick in, but... Um, I think on this one, since I have such little noise to begin with, I'm just going to go ahead with the light noise adjustment. And so now here is our image um, after doing a basic adjustment and 
dehaze and um, reduce noise. So here's where we started with the image, and here's where we are now. It's already um, considerably more dramatic and interesting than it was when we started. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing that I'm going to do here is a um, precision contrast. And let me slide down here to precision contrast. Um, and precision contrast allows us, a, a lot of other um, tools have a contrast slider, but Topaz has a slider that allows you to, to adjust micro, low, medium, and high contrast in your image. So instead of one slider, you have four very distinct adjusters that you can use to um, fine tune your image. Um, I'm going to play with this a little bit, kind of zoom it in. Again, a lot of times I come up to my presets and see what they look like. So there is one called brighter, doesn't work for me. There's a color detail, uh, uh, contrast boost. And here's one called details, which actually comes pretty close to working for me. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now, when I look at this, though, even though I like the trees and what's going on in the foreground and the sky, I see that I've blown out um, some of this area in the sky. So I need to come over to um, make some changes here and see. Um, it may be that I just need to brought my highlights here. And notice how I brought that back as I as I dropped the highlights. And you could also see the histogram up here moving away from the, the frame. Um, and then also I might drop my shadows just a little bit. And then I would play with my mid-tones. And do you see just small increments on this slider are changing our um, our sky really dramatically. So I would probably go with something um, about there. Um, and I'm starting to get into more of a silhouette with the trees. Um, something like that. I might, might work with this a little more to eliminate some of that sky, but I'm, I'm fairly happy with where that's landed. So um, I'm going to go down. The other thing that we have the opportunity here to do is to work with our saturation and, and vibrance and color contrast. Um, I may want to just bring my saturation just up a tiny bit, but we're going to do some things with the color in the foreground in a minute. Um, I'm not sure I like, I want to bring this down and not that low, but I'm still not happy with this area right here. Um, okay, that's starting to look a little better. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, close that up and then um, the next thing, I'm looking at my notes here. What the heck did I do? Okay. Um, okay, sorry. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is um, I am going to, we've created a bunch of adjustments over here, but I'm going to apply these now. And when I do this, what I'm doing is actually um, flattening this these adjustments and we'll create a new image that reflects these adjustments so you can see down here, this is where we where we started. If I click over here, you can see all the adjustments. And then this is the applied image. It contains those adjustments, but they, they aren't over here to be edited any longer. So when you click the apply button, this is your result. One of the things that I've discovered is if you go up to Topaz Studio and choose your preferences, if you look here, under workflow options you have this option to switch to a new image after applying so what that does is when i when i'm on this image and i apply it and it creates this image it not only creates the image but it puts this blue box around this image and selects it so if you don't have that set you can apply the image and it'll appear over here but sometimes you're still on this image and so you can end up making changes to the wrong image um, so this is a handy little switch. If you if you do this approach, you might want to flip that switch. Um, okay, so now we're ready to to put another adjustment on here. And for that, I want to go over and I want to look at. Um, I mean, we could stop here. We could. Um, um, well, actually, let's go down. I want to do a little bit of color tuning on this. The the HSL color tuning is one of my favorite 
um, tools within Topaz. It allows you to isolate various colors in the image. As I mouse over these little color squares, you can see the red hash marks on the screen. And it allows you to isolate like individual colors and then manipulate their saturation, their lightness, even their hue if you want. So if I choose the red right here and I come down and I'm just going to max this out so you can see. If I brighten this all the way up, it takes a second. It's, um, it's highlighting the red part down here in the foreground. You can, if I increase the red, you can see the areas that it's affecting. It's clearly way too much there, but I wanted you to see where they are. So you can bring this back and make adjustments just on those areas. You can also go over here into the orange and do the same thing. You can, I'm gonna max it out. You can see where the orange in the, in the foreground is and you can brighten that up. So now you can really see where it is. I like to do that and then back off to find that sort of sweet spot of brightness, color, and saturation that I'm looking for. So something maybe in that in that range like that. Um, could also go along to um, a little bit of yellow. One of the other places we can come over here to is the sky, and and you can play with each of these and look for what you know, where you want to tweak the color. Um, but I'm gonna go to the sky here because it's one of the bigger areas in the, in the image. You can increase the blue of that sky. You can also increase its brightness. Clearly that's, that's too much, but you can see how you can begin to um, get different moods out of that sky depending on how bright. Now you may be going for what you saw that day or you may be going for something entirely um, not not real, but maybe how it could have looked, um, which I think is a perfectly legitimate approach when you're being creative. We're not trying to fool anyone. We're just using the tools at our disposal. So there's where we started and there's where we are now. Um, and you can also come down and bump your details um, a little bit there. So looking good in the sky. So again, there's our before and our after. I might want to um, do some things to bring out the sky. So I think I skipped one of my steps in here, but I'm not going to dwell on that. Let's just keep going. I'm going to go ahead and apply that color tuning adjustment. And then I'm going to go over and look at what effects I might apply. And we could just be done. We could call this finished, but we might want to decide to apply some effects. And if we come up here, I'm going to type in black and white and it brings up all of these different black and white options um, that are pretty cool. Um, there's one here that I recall that was a sepia tone. Um, and I'm using the search feature up here um, that just typing in, looking for the, the effect. So here's this effect and it's made up of all these adjustments that have been put together by the folks at Topaz. You can go in and tweak each and every one of these adjustments if you like, or you can stay where you are with, with what they have. Um, you can also make global adjustments to opacity. So you can come down to the bottom here underneath where it says um, the name of the effect, which is the BW Sepia portrait. You can take this opacity slider and drop it back. And if you go all the way down, it it's eliminates whatever effects are over here. But as you slide to the right, you can add more of that. The opacity allows more of that effect to show through. So you can kind of fine tune until you get the image to just where you like it, which, you know, right there, I, I'm, I like what I see right there. That would be a viable option for me um, in, in working with this image and creating. And I could, I could stop right there. So let's go ahead and look at another image. And to close out of these, I'm gonna go up here to file and I'm gonna choose close all. And then I'm going to click apply to all and I'm gonna hit don't save and it's gonna throw all those away for me. And I'm gonna go over here to my folder where I have some other images. Um, actually, this is the, uh, the image that I created earlier. I told you I missed a step in, um, in what I did. This is the image that I created uh, as I was preparing for today um, uh, for, with a sepia tone. Um, 
look, which is, I really, uh, I really liked the image. I thought it turned out really well. So let's get out of there. Yeah, and it's worth it to mention, I mean, normally how long would this process take you? Of course, you're speeding through everything trying to show your process um, because we have a time limit, but how long would that process normally take you? You know, it really varies. I mean, sometimes I can work with an image for, you know, an hour or more, and other times things kind of come together very quickly. Um, it sometimes depends on whether I've got presets that I've created that I'm using on my own images, which sometimes helps too. But sometimes it's I, I know where I want to get, and then finding a way to get there is often a little um, challenging. So let's go to, I'm going to grab this image right here. And this, again, is a JPEG. I would normally work with um, the raw file. Um, so this image, the first thing I want to do here, um, again, I go around and check my image for anything I might want to clone out or anything that um, I need to crop or whatever. The first thing I'm going to do with this, my horizon's fine, but I am going to crop it. And as I look at this, you have, when you do your cropping, you can come up over here on the right. You have an option to straighten everything by sliding this way. And here's where I'm going to go in and put, um, type in my, my setting again, because sometimes zeroing back in is difficult. And over here under aspect ratio, if you do any cropping at all, you want to make sure that you go in and and set it to crop to an original or to an aspect ratio, unless you want to do a free crop. If you want to do a free crop, unconstrained will allow you to crop this way and this way independent of each other. In this case, I'm going to choose a square crop. So I'm going to choose one on one and I'm going to slide this over to something like that. I think, and I'm going to, let me see here. I think I'll do something more like that. And I don't think I need to bring it in any, maybe a little bit this way and, and I'll cl click done. So there's the crop that I chose for this particular image. I like the way the, the horse is framed by the, uh, the red bud and so on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and apply that change so that I'm working with the new image here and I'm going to start through my workflow. And the first thing I'm going to do again is that basic adjustment where I set my white and black point. So I'm going to take my black over to the, the edge here, and I'm going to take my white also over to the edge. Now, I want to watch the, the, the highlight that I want to preserve is right here in his back. I don't want to blow that out. I've got a, I've got a little of the that's um, dappled look uh, that he has on his back and I want to keep it or she. And um, let's see, so I'm gonna bring that back down a little bit and then I'm gonna play with my exposure and I might, I might try and brighten it, but see, as soon as I start to brighten it too much, I lose that detail in the back, which I don't wanna do, but that's a little better. Um, and then I'm gonna play with the clarity just a tiny bit and there's before and after, and I think actually, let me see, I might want to go back. I just noticed the foreground with a little bit of unpleasantness there. I might consider cropping that out. I suppose I could use the content aware tool as well. Let's do that. We'll use the, um, the healing brush and just see how this works on this. The healing brush, you can adjust up here. I'll come down and See if we can clean that out or that's a little better. And then sometimes just a little tap here and there. So that's better. I like that better now. Um, okay, so there's our basic adjustment. I'm gonna, happy with that. I'm gonna close that up. And then um, the next thing I wanna do is an in-focus adjustment. I'm gonna go up to these plugins because in-focus is not yet um, integrated into Topaz Studio. So I'm gonna go to Topaz in-focus and um, I've found that using this, I, I handhold a lot of things more than I should. I should probably use a tripod um, for a lot of things more often. But this shot, I, I saw it jumped out of my car um, while still near the road and photographed this horse. So I didn't take time to set up my tripod. So I find that in focus allows me sometimes when I have even the slightest amount of motion blur that I can correct for some of that. 
Now you have all of these sliders over here that allow you to do free, free uh, custom adjustments, but there are also these three presets. And I find that I, I'm often quite satisfied with one of these three. So I, there's the, the common one, and I, I, it's, that looks very good. Here's uh, a minor one, not quite as good. And then detailed, um, if we look at that one, it's probably gonna be beyond what I want. Actually, that's not bad. It's still not anywhere near over sharpened and it really brought out that, that texture in his coat and everything. So I think I will go with that. I'm not gonna make any adjustments over here, although you have that option. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And it takes a second for it to save this back to uh, Topaz Studio, and it's going to save it back as a new image. It will uh, have this uh, change in it, but no no other adjustments um, will be in that side panel. Um, and I, I've used this quite a bit and find that it really does make a difference in the um, the clarity and the and the sharpen the sharpening of the image. So um, there we are. So now, after doing the in focus, I want to go through that process of doing dehaze again. So I'm going to go down to dehaze. And again, I'm going to look at my defaults. And for this one, we have very little issue going on there. I'm going to choose the light dehaze. Actually, I'm going to choose the heavy dehaze. I need to read my notes better. So, okay, so there's our heavy dehaze on this. And again, we could make adjustments to that, but I'm happy with it the way it is, so I'm not going to. I close that up, and then I'm going to do a noise re, uh, reduce noise. And on this one, I think there's very little going on here with that, but sometimes I like what happens with the image. And again, I look at the presets, and you can see on a heavy noise, see how it's turned it in almost a, a cartoon. You've lost most of the detail. Um, and then in medium, you've lost a little, and then light. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose the light on this because it does give me a little bit of a of a I don't know what you'd call it a clarity pop or whatever but I like that effect that that happens there. Um, let's see. The last thing I'm going to do then is a, a precision contrast, and, and I'm going to kind of blow this up so I can see it. And I'm if you. Watch what happens if I take the micro contrast all the way up. You see how it's hit where it's playing in the in the in the image. You can you can max them out to kind of see where they're affecting things most dramatically, and then begin to play with looking for that sweet spot. At least that's one of my approaches to doing this. Um, and I think something along those lines. And then if we take this up, it's too much. But if we take it down, it gets a little it gets too light so i want to be somewhere i want to retain again i'm watching that spot on his back and i want to be somewhere in there um i may be able to take my mid-tones down a little bit maybe too much and then i want to bring my highlights over here on the right just a little bit and that looks pretty good now if i wanted to i might just give this a little tiny pop of saturation, not very much. And um, I'm going to go ahead and close that up. I'm happy with that. And then the next thing that I'm going to do here again is another color tuning adjustment. And I'll go down to color tuning. And this is the one again where you have all these different colors that you can control independently. And I want to find um, this is the one that looks like it's going to affect the red bud blooms the most oh no it's this one right here so what i want all i want to do here is see if i can't accentuate those blooms a little bit um it this spring day i was out last week things were just not quite as bright as i know they might be ordinarily so i don't know if we can see that i have to turn this off for us to see it that's very subtle but but i like i like that i'm going to go ahead and keep that um, if I wanted to, or if we wanted, let's see if we wanted to bring out any of this um, uh, yellow in the grasses, we could bump that up a little bit and we can increase the brightness. If we take it all the way up, you can see it's affecting the grasses back here. Uh, you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to bring that back down to 
an area where I can really just kind of accentuate it just a little bit. So again, just to show you how you can isolate these colors and really do something um, with each one. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, let's see. Um, I want to go in and brighten the, the horse a little bit. I, I think he's too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a bright adjustment. And I'm going to come down and open this up. And I'm watching really only the horse. I don't care about the rest of the image. I want to find a place that's about the exposure that I want for the horse. And that actually looks pretty good. Now, I don't necessarily want to lighten the entire image, although that doesn't actually look too bad. But I want to show you how we can open up the horse without affecting the rest of the image. So I'm going to go um, into the masking tool here. So we're in our brightness contrast adjustment. We've just lifted the brightness globally on the image. But now we're going to go into the masking tool here. And I always get this backwards, so bear with me if I get it wrong. I think I've done it again. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to come in here, make my brush a little smaller, and I got it right. What do you know? So what I'm doing is I'm painting in the the brightness adjustment that we just made just on the horse. Now you notice the red circle and the green circle. This is a feature in Topaz called Edge Aware. As long as you have the edge of what you're, you're uh, masking between the red line and the green line, it does a pretty nice job of masking for you um, without getting out, you know, outside of the area that you want to mask. Um, and you can zoom in on this. And if you need to navigate, like right now, I want to get down on his nose. If you come up to the upper right, there's a navigation tool and you can grab the square and move it down to where you can find the area that you want. Now I need to um, make my brush a little smaller for that part of his body. And again, I'm going pretty quickly here. You're gonna take a lot more time with your precious images than I'm doing right now, but um, you get the idea. And so again, I'm going through here and I'm, I'm giving that, um, brightening the animal so that it's a better exposure and you go down the legs and I'm going very quickly here so I'm not going to try and get perfect on this but um, I've got so many things I want to share with you I don't want to spend a lot of time on that but you get the idea um, now that we look at this now we have um, there there's bef there's before and there's after now we've done this brightness adjustment we have the mask there we can go back in and we can still play we can brighten that horse more you know, we could make it a really, really bright, or we could we could drop it down so that it's still reacting to our mask. So you can tweak it even after the fact. So somewhere right in about maybe about there, something like that. Anyway, um, the masking feature that we just did applies to every single adjustment in Topaz. So any adjustment that you make that you want to selectively apply to a part of your image, it's it's very easy to do it in just the way that um, that we just did. So the last thing that I'm going to do to this image is apply a vignette. I'm going to go down to the um, the vignette tool right here. And when I apply a vignette, the very first thing I do is take my transition and drop it down. When I do that, I can see where my vignette is. Now to place the vignette, you can come over and, and put your mouse on this little white dot and drag the white dot around. That's one way to position it. I find this way a little bit um, easier. The other thing you can do is click on this little navigation icon here on the right and then move your mouse over on the screen and um, position the vignette where you want it. You can also change the roundness of your vignette and by having the transition all the way down you see this sharp line. It's really easy to see where you are with it. Um, once you get it where you want you can then begin to play with the strength of it so you can back it off to where it's closer to what you want, something like that maybe. And then the final step would be to take your transition and adjust it to where you don't even see that line anymore. And you can still play with your strength. So now we've got this nice kind of vignette around our horse and this beautiful spring scene. 
um, and that's that's it. So once um, you know, once you're ready, if you're if you want to add your signature to that, I'm going to go up to my recent files here, and I'm going to grab. Oh, drat! It's not there. Bear with me one second. I'm gonna go get it because I want you to see this. It's pretty cool. Um, open and sorry about that. I had this in there and I I lost it. Okay, come on. Okay, sorry about that. So what I want to do now is um, this is a PNG file. It's a um, transparent file with my signature on it. And all, to, all you do to add your signature is select the image that you want to put it on and then drag and drop the image in a, um, it's called a um, image layer, and it drops your, oh, that's not the one I wanted, but that's okay, it'll work for what we're doing. So you just size it to where you want it, and place it on your image. And you can also adjust the opacity of it so that you're toning it down if you want, and so on. And obviously, there's some information I think Heath has that he can share with you. These are from Photo Logo. It's just a nice way of signing your images on social media. It's very easy to do in Topaz. So let's close these out and go to another image. And let's see, what do I want to do next? Um, let's see. Oh, let's do this one. This is this is very fun. Okay. So this is a dogwood over near a cemetery in my neighborhood. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do as I look at this, the first thing I notice is that obviously the horizon is is skewed. Now I try to do this. I try to not. I try to get this right in the camera when I shoot, but obviously it doesn't always happen. If this happens to you, you you can quickly level it by choosing the crop icon. You'll come in and level your image. And done. And then I want to crop this a little bit too. So I'm going to use the crop tool again. I want to remember to go up and choose original because I don't want to, I want to keep my aspect ratio. And then I'm going to slide in and get my crop kind of where I want it. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to say done. And there's my, my, my crop with this image. Um, let's see. The very first thing that I'm going to do with this is my basic adjustment. So I'm going to go in here and set my white point again. Um, I've switched to my histogram at the top so I can see it. And I'm going to take my white level all the way over to the right side and my black levels down a little bit. And then I want to, well, maybe a little more, something like that. Then I want to play with this exposure. Um, and the clarity, maybe about like so. Um, there's our before and there's after. I'm pretty happy with that basic adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead. Now, if I wanted, I could saturate again a little bit, but I'm, I'm going to not do that right now. And I'm going to close this up. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is, again, another in focus adjustment. So I'm going to go up here, do my in focus. And again, um, you can see this is the image right out of the camera. Again, this was handheld uh, with an 18 135 millimeter lens on my Fuji, and I just feel like it will benefit from having. Um, let's look, go for the detailed um, in focus. 
actually let's go with the common in focus and again you can tweak over here to your heart's content and get exactly what you want but i'm going to go ahead and say okay and i often find on the on these adjustments the presets are often um right on you know right on target so again it takes a second for it to save it back this is one of the advantages once these all get moved into topaz studio this part of the process will be much quicker because um, the tool will be within the Topaz Studio editor instead of having to go out like this and save back. So I'll it's be excited of, as they the main, keep adding new ones. It's one of the main reasons I love Topaz Studio is because adding those adjustments is a whole lot easier than adding plugins and having to go back and forth and back and forth. Yes. Um, let's see, dogwood, dogwood, dogwood. Um, let's see. Okay, so then I'm going to apply that, which I think I already just did that. And then um, I want to do a, a dehaze. Did I do that already? No. Losing track. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is my dehaze that, I, that I've been enjoying here. Again, I'm going to choose on this one. I know I want a light dehaze. And I only know that because I played with this earlier. And then I want to do a noise, reduce noise. And on this one, I also want to do, I'm just going to go with the light noise. And I'm not going to make any additional adjustments to my sliders. And that's that's it on those two. Um, and then I'm going to do a precision contrast. and i want to find an area where i can kind of really see what's going on here i'm going to go in and take a look at this details um and i believe that's where i'm going to start with this and actually i may keep it right there i may uh i may move my shadows so i'm going to keep it right there i love like what I like what I'm seeing. There's our before and there's our after. And so I'm going to leave that precision contrast the way it is. Then I'm going to go into again into my color tuning. And again, I want to see if I can't enhance my the color of these blossoms without making it look unnatural. So again, as I look at where the color is playing, you can see the red highlights that show up when I mouse over the red color um, box here on the um, color tuning screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now I can go down and I'm going to saturate 100%. And you can see where it's playing in the image. And so I, I can then brighten this also so I can see where it's playing. And then I'm going to bring this back to just above what it was, what it is in the screen. So it's just a tiny bit of brightness. There's before. And there's after. It's very subtle, but it's, I might maybe bring this up just a little bit. Yeah, okay. And then I could do uh, just my details just up just a little bit. And I like what I'm seeing there. So I'm going to go ahead and say okay to my HSL color tuning. And um, I'm going to apply this again and start with a new image. The next thing I want to do again, I want to do just a little bit of the radiance that I mentioned to you before. Um, I just love to give this just a little bit of glow. Um, to me, it's reminiscent of the Orton effect that that used to be done by blending slide or you know stacking slides together. And the thing about this, if we take it beyond about six or so, you can see it starts to get very um, ethereal very quick. Um, I'm going to go put my cursor over here in the box and I'm going to take it down one at a time until I get to about three. And I think that's probably plenty. I'm going to leave it there. So there's before and there's after. So just a little bit of a glow that I think really um, just makes it makes it nice. Um, I might. I might do a little bit of a contrast adjustment and brightness adjustment here, but I'm going to skip that given the time. And I'm going to come down and do um, a little bit of radiance. We just did that, didn't we? That's the radiance. I meant to say a vignette. And I'm going to take the vignette again. I'm going to drop my transition down. 
I'm going to make my window a little rounder. Um, and then I'm going to drop the strength down to about there. And the size, I'm pretty good. And then I'm going to drop my transition back to where I have just a subtle vignette around the edge bringing us into this area of the image. And then when I'm ready to do my um, my signature, I'm just going to go over and grab, whoops, grab the signature, drop it on the image, and then I can size it and locate it wherever I want. So I'm not going to do that because um, I want to show you one more image before we stop. And go ahead and get rid of these. And I don't know, Heath, if this would be a, a Rad Drew webinar if I didn't do an infrared image. Um, I've had so much fun doing infrared and processing it in, uh, in Topaz. Um, if you've been on a webinar with me before, you know I love to shoot infrared images, and I use a Lumix uh, DMC um, LX7 uh, point-and-shoot camera that I had converted at Spencer's camera. Um, it's a great option if you want something light to carry around that, that still gives you a good range and produces some amazing um, uh, images with um, in infrared. Uh, and again, I think he's got a message that'll go out to you that has some information about Spencer's if you're interested. Um, there's also an article right now on my blog, uh, on my uh, website. I have a guest blog post by a local photographer here in Indiana by the name of Gary Potts. And he did a really nice article about his experience with infrared and shares a number of images and talks about where he got his camera converted and, and so on. So you might want to check that out. So with all of these images, where I start again is I'd look at my cropping and I look at my leveling and I've, I'm good to go on this one. I don't have to make any of those changes. First thing I do is I go up to my basic adjustment. And again, I look at my histogram here and I want to bring my levels over to where I'm right up against the edge on each side. And just that right there, there's before and there's after. Just that one adjustment has turned this image into something really exciting, I think. Um, and let's see. All right, that's the basic. And then I, again, with this one, I also, um, so under some circumstances, I might do the in focus, but I'm not going to do that on this one right now in the interest of time, but I don't think it's necessary. I am going to go down and do a, um, a dehaze like we've done before. And again, on this one, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose the, um, the heavy dehaze. and the denoise. Oh, wait a second, I wanna go back to this. I wanna take this, this one I am gonna tweak. So I'm moving that a little bit and to really bring out those darks. So with an infrared image, what I'm looking for is white whites and black blacks, like the black in the tree, um, these veins of tree wood running through the leaves and then the sky. So by bringing the strength up on this dehaze adjustment, it's allowed me to get there um, to that point. Then I'm going to do my uh, reduce noise. And again, I'm going to choose on this one the, um, the light noise reduction. And um, I might be done with this image today. That I would stop right here. Now, the other thing that I often do with my infrared images is to add just a touch of um, radiance. I'm going to apply this. And the reason I, I was doing this one earlier, and normally with my infrared images, I love that little touch of radiance that gives it that glow. But this image was so pristine, I felt like it really didn't need it. But it's just another different kind of look. So. So there's the image um, with, a, with a glow to it. There it is without the glow. So I kind of like it without the glow because you get these richer tones here. Um, 
And again, when you when you want to do your uh, signature, you simply drag it over here and um, you know insert it um, the way we've been doing. Um, Heath, this is probably a good place for me to stop. Do you think? Yeah, I, I wanted to mention something. Uh, it, also, in the interest of time, but normally we would have a Q and A. Um, I'm going to kind of bypass that because there's a new feature in Studio I kind of want to show off, and I'm just going to kind of have you drive a little bit. So I know um, this is a feature that people have asked about a lot, and I know it was on my list before we even released Topaz Studio 1 that I wanted it to be a part of it, um, but it never really happened. If you can go to the File menu in Topaz Studio and then click on that little Batch Process button, Oh, batch processing. Yeah. We have added batch processing in Studio, and it's as simple as getting whatever um, effect, adjustment stack, however you want to batch process your images. Uh, in this case, it would be the way that Rad has done uh, this infrared image. Get it all set up on an image in Studio, and then set your for source folder, set your destination folder. Of course, sources can include any subfolders. Um, and then you have some file naming options there. We've got another custom option coming, but that's all pretty straightforward. And then uh, specifically in the file save options, if you're using raw files, since you can't technically save out a raw file, um, you can make this apply to only raw files only. Or you, if you uncheck that box right now, it would make everything a JPEG at maximum image quality. Uh, if you have that box checked, then if it's a JPEG, TIFF, or PNG, it will stay a JPEG, TIFF, or PNG. You can mix and match file types. Um, but that is live and working in 1.10.5, and I wanted to at least give you guys a preview of that. Um, I don't know how many of you are using Studio for noise reduction. The reduced noise, um, I think, is fantastic. Um, maybe not on images that have extreme noise. That's where Topaz Denoise kind of fills in that gap. We have some of the best uh, high ASO noise reduction through Topaz Denoise. But you can do all of your basic image edits through this batch process to renews noise, remove haze, do your basic adjustments, set your black and white points. Um, the thing I'm really excited about this is I love processing images in impression. And since impression is part of studio, I can set up an impression effect or just, you don't even have to make it an effect. You can just do an adjustment stack and build it custom and then batch process however many images you want. Um, <laughs> As that so like I've shot some wedding stuff in the past that I've loved running through impression just for friends. Um, this would have saved me so much time <laughs> instead of having to open every single image. Do the like even though I was clicking on effects, I had to open an image, click on the effects, save it. Open an image, click on the effects, save it. And I was sitting there for two hours processing all these images that I wanted to show them. Uh, now it's as easy as setting this up, and then if you see that little checkbox at the bottom that hide application window while batching, uh, in Denoise, if you're batching, uh, Denoise takes priority, so you can't really do anything on your computer. In Topaz Studio, we've added the ability for it to run in the background, so while you're batching, you can open up Lightroom and organize photos or work in Photoshop or do anything else besides work in Studio um, while this is running. So um, I've had a bunch of photos that I've always wanted to run through impression. I just haven't because it takes so long, I've got them batching at home right now <laughs> just because I want to see what they'll look like. So this is an exciting new feature. Um, also another thing that had been requested, that has been in for a while but not many people know about, if you can click cancel for me, Rad. If you go down to your film strip view where you have both of these images open, you'll see that little pencil icon. Um, if you click on at the bottom there uh, where you have P10, oh. yeah, if you click that little pencil icon, you can now rename uh, the images in your, so if you wanted this to be a uh, tree or whatever, when you're applying those layers, basically what it's doing is it's the same thing as flattening in Photoshop, right? If you were to hit Command or Control E in Photoshop, it would take all your layers and flatten them into one single image. The reason you do this in Studio is because uh, can you click on your second or hit cancel and then click on your second image for me? That's fine. I'm sorry. I'm kind of directing. That's okay. So now you've done this radiance adjustment. Let's say you wanted to add on top of the radiance adjustment this black and white sepia portrait. Can you click that effect, the black and white sepia portrait effect that's in the left-hand column? Once he does that, if you look, it's removed that radiance adjustment and replaced it. Um, what happens is as you click effects or make your own custom effects, if you click through, it's going to replace everything in your adjustment stack. By applying the image uh, stack that he's done in the 
in the difference between the first and second image. He's compressed all that into its own image stack, and then you can add um, other effects. So let's say with the first image, you wanted to add the black and white sepia portrait, uh, and then you wanted to, on top of that, add an impression, impression preset uh, or impression effect. You could do that just by clicking this black and white sepia portrait, hitting apply, and then going into impression and clicking your second effect and hitting apply. It's a way to stack effects in Studio. Uh, those are questions that we get a lot. I'm sorry to kind of take over the Q&A section, but I wanted to cover that real quick, Rad, um, just to oh, answer that's questions. Great. Thank so you. That was a lot. Yeah. Guys, Rad has some great stuff. I know he's got a bunch of workshops he's doing. you got one coming up in Tuscany, don't you, Rad? Uh, Tuscany next week. Yeah, I leave uh, leave next week for Tuscany with John Barclay and yeah. then a handful of other things. Cuba in November. I have room for a very small group of six people. Great way to see Cuba. Uh, and then in December, uh, late November, December, I'll be teaching with uh, Jack Davis at the Hui in, uh, Hon in uh, Molokai, Hawaii. Fantastic. So some really exciting stuff. Um, some of it's not even on my website yet. I just heard about Hawaii two days ago. So um, Email me if you want any information about any of those things or sign up for my newsletter and you'll get news of uh, what's coming. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, you can get all that on his website uh, if y'all want to follow him too. That's Rad Drew Photography. Sign up for his newsletter, man. He's got some great stuff. Um, and of course, uh, while we're on the subject of Rad, uh, you've got his Facebook page there. It's facebook.com forward slash Rad Drew Photography. But man, congratulations. The cover story of the uh, the PSA is that's that's fantastic. That's like a life goal. So <laughs> congratulations. I'm, I'm very happy about it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you so much for coming and sticking with us. Um, Rad, thank you so much for this awesome presentation. Uh, if you guys have any questions, since we didn't do the Q&A, you can always send those questions to webinars at topazlabs.com. That'll go to our support team and they can answer those for you. You can also sign up for additional webinars at topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. Trying to reach out to more presenters. Everybody's busy, though, because they're doing their uh, spring slash summer bits of training. But I'll have some more scheduled there shortly. Um, Rad, we got to get you back on the map. I know you're going to be gone for a little while, but hopefully we can get you back in late June or yep, early we'll July. Probably, yep, late, that sounds good. And um, yeah, if anybody has questions for me, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. I love talking about this stuff and I'll share what I can if, I, if it's something I know. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks everybody for coming. I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world.